Label Radio. So after NWA disbanded and you guys were kind of doing your thing, you came across another great group, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Right. When Easy calls you on the telephone from Cleveland, you heard the excitement in his voice. Right. Was it the same excitement that he had when he was talking about NWA or was it different? Same excitement. Same excitement? That same was coming from the same creative center of his brain, of his heart. He heard him. The, the, actually, the bodyguards heard him outside uh, wrapping around a, an oil barrel because it was Cleveland. Yeah. It was cold and Easy was playing. It was the middle of winter. And they brought him in and they rapped for Easy. And Easy liked him and called me on the phone in the middle of the night and had me listen to him. And he said, We got to get these guys, you know, to California. And I sent him bus tickets. <laughs> well, I didn't want him get I didn't want him getting here before Eric got back. Okay. Okay. So um, You put him on a bus. We put him on a bus. Yeah. Took him like what three or four days to get here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when they got here, Easy was here. We put him in a in a motel or whatever. And you know, that started Bone Thugs and Harmony. And they had an amazing EP. You guys put the EP out and you had an amazing EP. But then things started to, you know, take a turn for the worse or whatever. And you wasn't around when the East uh, 1999 album actually came out. You was there for its first inception, but you wasn't around when the album actually came out. That album was finished in August of 1994. Okay. Okay. We didn't, they didn't put it out until I think uh, July or August of 1995 after Easy had had passed away. And you said that you said that in your book you said that this Bone Thugs Harmony album will could surpass Michael Jackson's thriller at 15, 20, 30 million records sold, right? If they would have known what they were uh, I, I shouldn't get into that. So but why so so if you knew that this album was kind of there, why did you leave Ruthless Records before it actually came out since you kind of knew that this was the, your 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 baby you guys worked in why why did you leave it? Easy died, man. There was nothing left for me. When he died, that was it for me. There was nothing left for me at Ruthless. So when he left this earth, a couple weeks before, I left Ruthless. Okay. And then the album comes out, it does, what, five or six million, something like that? Actually, it's it's diamond, so it did at least ten. Now, but at the time, when it came out, it was at five million, and... Yeah, and Whatever. And you were like, it should have did more. Well, it should have done more because strategy-wise, they should have put out Crossroads first. I Cross- agree. Crossroads is one of the best singles that I've ever heard in rap music. You're right. It, and, and they put out, it was a fourth It was a fourth single? I think it was fourth. And by that time, the album had really fizzled out, run its course, yeah. you know? And uh, But if they would have put Crossroads out first, that album would have sold 40 million copies. I mean, they were doing something that nobody else ever did. Whoever right. layered vocals like they did. And, you know, Tony C and Unique, you know, produced that record. And it was great. The only reason that Creeping on a Come Up didn't, wasn't, didn't get the acclaim that it did, it, it only had six or seven songs on it, which was one beneath the limit to be on Billboard's Hot 200. That would have been a number one record, but it didn't have enough songs on it to qualify as an album. It qualified as an EP. Why you guys didn't put it? Because you knew that. I mean, being a business guy, you, you knew that. Why you didn't put another song on there? When you put out a record, you don't expect it to, I mean, to, to sell millions and millions of copies. They delivered a record to us. We put it out. Okay. You know, and it was, that was the record. And then, yes, we should have. First of all, we should have done it because we would have made much more money yeah. <laughs> if we, you know, as an album than it would have as an EP. EP sold for less money. And it just wasn't something that we thought or talked about. You know, we put it out because that's, it was, that's what, what it was. Are you still, are, are you still Coral Joe and Cool with the Bone Thugs and Harmony guys? I'm not cool with them because they talk shit about me. Oh. The only one I'm really cool with is Busy. 
And uh, I, I talk to them and see them once in a while. But why they talk shit about you? Everybody talks shit about you, but why does Bone Thugs and Harmony talk shit about you? Why? Yeah. They tell people that they think I killed easy. But Wait. it's funny because I've heard that story around the water cooler several times. And it's hard to believe if, a.k.a., you're stealing money for easy. If, if, if I go by what they're saying and you're stealing money from this man and he's a cash cow, why would you kill the cash cow? Well, that's, if that was the premise. Well, obviously, you're a lot smarter than most of the people that, that talk about <laughs> that. Because I, all I say is, who had the most to gain? From easy dying. You said that. I'm you. the only person that didn't gain from it. You said that a lot. And and, and you look back on it, you look back on this like if he's the cash cow and you say that he was stealing from this man, why would he kill the cash cow? Well, it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense that at I all. I would kill the goose that that killed that's that laid the golden egg, yeah. I mean it, it makes no sense. So you know something? So but you're still cool with Busy Bone. Very cool. I mean, he's a good guy. Yeah. And you know, they have a they have a sort of a management team. Uh, Jamie Adler and Steve LaBelle, who I, I'm very fond of. You Big know. shout to Jamie Adler because he's the reason why you're here. Because you know, I know it was you yeah. know he he spoke up highly about us, and then it, it it put you at ease to get here. So big shout to my man Jamie Adler. Yeah, he's in New York, and he's a good friend of mine. I knew his dad in Cleveland, and you know we're all from the same place and the same circles. Nice. He's a good guy, and he's. Uh, but wait, but but wasn't Bone Thugs in that in that kind of category as far no. as no wasn't as oh. nowhere near Bone Thugs made a great record. They didn't change the world. Yeah, that's NWA true. changed the world. I mean, these guys are what they did was phenomenal, and it doesn't happen that often. Bone Thugs and Harmony made a great record, and if Easy wouldn't have died, they probably would have become the biggest group in the world because they're very difficult guys to, to control. <laughs> <laughs> Even to this day, I mean, I hear they're, stories about them as adults still being kind of yeah, difficult. So they're, they're very difficult. Yeah. So it took Easy and I full time just keeping them interested in what they should be doing and that's making great music, which they did. Yeah. So, but change the world? I don't think so. No. NWA, man, they changed the world. One of the greatest groups of all time. 